Welcome to our series on understanding the prophetic gift, the gift of prophecy. Understanding the gift of prophecy. Amen. I am your host, Prophet Bernard Delon. Amen. We are beginning our teaching from 1 Corinthians chapter 12. From verse 7 to 10, this has been a passage that we have been reading over the past few weeks. It says, but the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit all. For to one is given the Spirit, is given by the Spirit, the word of wisdom. To another, the word of knowledge by the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit spirit to another the working of miracles to another prophecy to another discerning of spirits to another diverse kinds of tongues to another interpretation of tongues we will be looking at these passages by the grace of god and we will be diving into what the Lord wants us to understand by his grace. Now, let's make a few statements concerning this passage that we have just read. I want to make 10 statements from this passage. Number one, each believer carries something from the Holy Spirit that, and that something is a gift that we are talking about. Number two, our gifts were given to us so that we can help other believers. Number three, there are various gifts that are given to the believers. Number four, each person's gift operates differently through him or her by the enabling of the Holy Spirit. Number five, some of the gifts that were given include Word of wisdom, word of knowledge, faith, healing, miracles, prophecy, discerning of spirits, diverse kinds of tongues, and interpretation of tongues. Number six, all spiritual gifts given to believers come from one source. That source is the Holy Spirit. All spiritual gifts given to believers come from one source. That source is the Holy Spirit. Number seven, no gift is more important than the other. All are needed in the dimensions they are given for the maturing of the body of Christ. Number eight, the Holy Spirit decides which gifts to give, when to give them, who to give them to, and the measure in which they are given. Number nine, the dimensions and the level to which a gift functions in us is not a determinant factor to, superior, to superiority, but a call to greater levels of responsibility, service, and humility. And number 10, spiritual gifts are not for our popularity, fame, or performance. They are for the manifestation of the Holy Spirit in our midst to meet the needs of the believers. And so those are 10 points that I want to make to you concerning spiritual gifts. Now, we are dealing with the gift of prophecy. And so let us now understand what is the gift of prophecy what is this gift now the bible says my sheep hear my voice and i know them and they follow me that's john 10 verse 27 now every believer as long as you're a believer Every believer has the capacity, 
the potential, the ability to hear the voice of God. As long as you're a born again believer, as long as you came to the kingdom through the Holy Ghost, you have the capacity, the potential, the ability to hear the voice of God. John 10, 27 is the proof text for that. Now, the way God speaks to his sheep is different for every individual. The way God speaks to a flock, meaning a collective group of believers, is clearly discernible. How does he speak to his sheep? That depends on the kind of relationship you have with him. But when it comes to the flock, God uses the man that he appoints over them. Now, once you become a born again believer through the Holy Spirit, through water and blood, that's 1 John 5 verse 8, you are given what is called the natural ability in your renewed state to hear God. Once you become born again, you are given the natural ability in your renewed state to hear God. If you can hear God, you can prophesy. Let me say it again. If you can hear God, you can prophesy. And because you are born again, and because you can hear God, you are prophetic. So it simply means that every believer is prophetic. Now, we are going from level to level. So watch this now. As a born again believer, you have the capacity to hear God. If you can hear God, you can prophesy. If you can prophesy, you are prophetic. Now, it goes from that level to the level of the gift of prophecy to the level of the office of the prophet. So it graduates. So simply because you can hear God doesn't mean you have the gift of prophecy. Because each level you go carries greater responsibilities, dimensions, levels, and operations. We're going to talk about it. Now, we are prophetic in the sense that we have a relationship with God and the ability to hear him speak. Prophetic in this sense does not mean you're a prophet or have the gift of prophecy. It simply means you can hear God speak to you. Now, hearing him speak is different from the gift of prophecy. The gift of prophecy is a special endowment given by the Holy Spirit to hear God on behalf of others. So in the realm of relationship, personal relationship, you will hear God. To hear God on behalf of others, that now takes you into the realm of the gift. This does not mean if you have the gift, you are not hearing God for yourself. The relationship you have with the Lord allows you to operate in the personal hearing realm. The Bible says in John 16 verse 13, when the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. That's singular and that's collective. For he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak. 
and he will declare to you things that are to come. That's the Holy Spirit dealing with you as an individual, as a believer, and dealing with us as a flock, as the body of Christ. Now, the gift of prophecy is what we call a vocal gift that operates by the unction of the Holy Spirit. It allows us to tell something that God has spontaneously brought to mind so that individuals can be strengthened, encouraged, comforted, edified, confirmed, exhorted, and or admonished. This is the gift of prophecy. Now, the gift of prophecy is given from and by the Spirit of God to human vessels so that we, so that the will of God can be revealed unto human recipients. 1 Corinthians 14, verse 3. But he that prophesied speaketh unto men to edification, exhortation, and comfort. Now in 1 Corinthians 12, verse 10, 1 Corinthians 12, verse 10, the Greek word propheteia, propheteia, P-R-O-P-H-E-T-E-I-A, propheteia, is what is translated into our English Bibles as prophecy. Now, propheteia means, one, a discourse emanating from divine inspiration and declaring the purposes of God, whether by reproving and admonishing the wicked or comforting the afflicted or revealing things hidden, especially by foretelling future events. Two, it means the prediction of events relating to the kingdom of our Lord Jesus Christ and its speedy triumph together with the consolations and admonitions pertaining to that kingdom, the spirit of prophecy, the divine mind to which the faculty is due. A whole sort of theological stuff. Just bear with me. Prophetia means the endowment and speech of Christian teachers who are called prophets. So there is a dimension of teachers called prophets. Mm -hmm. That's why a lot of prophets, what do you see them do? You see them teaching because those two gifts, they actually function together, the prophet and the teacher. Prophetia also means the gifts and utterances of the prophets, especially of predictions Yes, let's leave it there. So the gifts and utterances of the prophets, especially predictions. So this, this gift, you can see it is very diverse. I'm going to break down all of this for you, um, this theological stuff. I'm going to break it down for you so that you get it very simply. Now, we understand that this gift of prophecy is given by the Spirit of God and allows us to know things spontaneously, things that we have we are not thinking about, things that uh, we have no information about. It just comes to us. New knowledge comes to us. And that is happening by the Holy Spirit. And the purpose of that is so that Believers can be strengthened, encouraged, comforted, edified, confirmed, exhorted, or admonished. Now, when you take the gift of prophecy, how do we classify it? Because this gift is so diverse in its operations. So let's look at the classifications and the groupings of the gift of prophecy in our New Testament context. When we talk about the uniqueness of 
this gift. You find that you can put this gift in different classifications, different groups, because of the diversity in which it operates. So we are seeing here that there are five different ways that we can group and classify this gift. Number one, it's a manifestation gift. We talk about this in our previous lessons. It's a manifestation gift because it serves to bring about expressions and demonstrations of the Holy Spirit. You can check my teachings on categories of spiritual gifts, part one and part two. I dealt with that. It's a motivational gift because it makes known what is hidden by way of words and actions. A huge part of prophetic ministry is signs. Okay, that's what we mean by actions. So it makes known what is hidden by words and by actions that stir up our spirit man. So it inspires, it stimulates, it encourages, it arouses, it persuades, it activates, it pushes, it triggers, it provokes, and it excites the human soul. Yes, the gift of prophecy is doing all of this as a motivational gift. And one of the things that you need to know is that some motivational speakers are actually operating within the gift of prophecy. You will see this a little later on. Number three, it's a ministry gift because it's fi it finds its way of expression in the prophetic office as well as through the various ministries that have expressions of the prophetic within it, such as teaching, foretelling, forthtelling, fortifying, and revealing or and predicting. So many things going on here. It's a ministry gift. Number four, it can be grouped into two groups of gifts. One, it can be in the revelation gifts, which comprises of word of wisdom, word of knowledge, discerning of spirits, gift of prophecy. Those are the revelation gifts, the gifts. We group them into that group and call them revelation gifts. So usually, if you see somebody operating with the gift of prophecy, there's a high possibility that these gifts, other gifts, word of wisdom, word of knowledge, discerning of spirits, are also present with that individual. And then the gift of prophecy can also operate in the group we call the speaking gifts. Why? Because it's a vocal gift. Gift of tongues, interpretation of tongues, and prophecy now make up that group of speaking gifts. Number five, the gift of prophecy now finds its place in what we call the prophetic grouping of gifts. What is this now? This includes word of knowledge, word of wisdom, and a combined operation of both the gift of tongues and interpretation of tongues. Remember what we said in our previous lessons, that when tongues is interpreted for people to understand it, it morphs into the prophetic gift. Yes? So that's the uniqueness of the gift of tongues there. So here we have several classifications, several groupings of the gift of prophecy. Now, the gift of prophecy is very dynamic and it works alongside other vocal gifts. So when you see gift of prophecy start operating, word of knowledge will follow suit. Word of wisdom might very well be there. And usually, when you see individuals operating in great dimensions of word of knowledge, remember what word of knowledge is? It reveals situation. Remember what word of wisdom is? It reveals solution. Remember what prophecy is? It reveals things ahead of time. 
That's the basic, right? Now, these three gifts, word of knowledge, word of wisdom, prophecy, constitute what we call the prophetic grouping, okay? Because they function by spontaneous divine revelation. Now, one thing that is unique about the gift of prophecy is that two other gifts, as I said, have its the ability when they are combined to morph into the prophetic. That is what? Gift of tongues and interpretation of tongues. Now, the gift of prophecy alongside other gifts, such as word of knowledge, word of wisdom, and the combined operation of tongues and interpretation of tongues now serves to meet the need of edification, exhortation, encouragement, comforting the saints, strengthening, confirming, admonishing, exhorting. All of these needs are now being met. That's what 1 Corinthians 14 and verse 3 speaks to. So whenever the gift of prophecy is being used, it is God getting personal with the believer so that the believer's faith can rest now on God's will, God's plan, and God's innovation and not the believer's imagination or desires of their heart. A lot of people believe that declaring something is prophesying. No. Declaration only becomes prophetic if God is the one who speaks it. We're going to be talking about that. But I want you to understand that whenever the gift of prophecy is being used, is being manifested, it is God getting personal with you. So that your faith will not rest on your desire or your imagination. But your faith will rest on his will, his plan, and his innovation. Gift of prophecy is very dynamic and very unique. Now, the gift of prophecy has, a, has an history and it has a future. Let's look at this in detail now. The gift of prophecy. When we talk about this gift, let's remember this is a channel that God is using to speak to his people. Now, God is not confined to any one place to any one time, whether in the past, in the present, or in the future. And he's not confined to any one person. Let me say it again. God is not confined to any one place, to any one time, whether in the past, the present, or the future. And he's not confined to any one person. So if anybody claim that they are the only one hearing from God. That is worse than a red flag. Because God cannot be confined. And God cannot be contained. And God is not only speaking through one person. And if anybody claim that God is not speaking. Then that God is not God. Because he cannot be confined to one place. Or to one time. Or to one person. Therefore. The gift of prophecy has a beginning. And it has a future. Notice I did not say it has an end. Because God is not confined to any one place. To any one time. Or to any one person. The God that we speak of. Has no beginning. And he has no end. How then can you say prophecy? 
will end. I will explain the scriptures for you. Now, the debate as to whether prophecy ended with a particular dispensation is contingent, and you keep hearing me saying this, upon what one holds in their mind as a revelation concerning the gift of prophecy. What have they been taught concerning this gift? So it is contingent upon whether you are a cessationist or a continuationist. You either fall in one of these two groups. Cessationists believe that prophecy ended with John. But what kind of prophecy ended with John? Continuationists believe that prophecy continued beyond John the Apostle in the book of Revelation. But the question is, what kind of prophecy continued beyond the Apostle John? And these are the questions we need to answer. Now, cessationists contend that 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 9 to 10, is an indication that prophecy is finished. Let's look at it. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 9 and 10. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. Next verse. But then, when that which is perfect is come, that which is in part shall be done away with. Now, did it say that prophecy will be finished? Or did it say the part will be finished? What will be finished? And you see, you have to now become technical in how you interpret this. What is going to be finished? Because let's go back. What is prophecy? Prophecy is the Holy Spirit speaking to us. So if prophecy is the Holy Spirit speaking to us, that's what it's called. You see, now I want to break the limitation in your mind concerning the box you have put prophecy in. Because now we are dealing with hearing God and speaking what we hear from God. The question is, will that end? Will we ever stop hearing God at any point in time? So let's continue. Cessationists use that scripture to say that prophecy will end. And it has ended. While continuationists believe that 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 10, which tells us that the gift of prophecy is given, that they use that scripture as evidence that the prophetic gift is still available. Now, the issue really is not whether the gift is no longer present, but what aspects of the gift, the gift's operation has ended. Regarding scripture, which is the revelation of Jesus, the Bible is really the revelation of Jesus, the savior of the world, that has ended. That canon has closed. There is nobody that can come now and claim that they have new scripture. No such thing. That has ended. That has closed. Now, God has revealed to us everything we need to know in type, in shadow, in parallel, in fulfillment. Concerning Jesus is coming to this world and Jesus is return to this world. Everything we need to know about those two things have been fully revealed. And so that is closed. Now, regarding the continued operation of the Holy Spirit to reveal God's mind, God's will, and God's purpose to us as individuals and as the body of Christ, that is still in operation. Let's look at a few scriptures. Jeremiah 33 and verse 3. Call unto me and I will answer thee 
and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Now I contend, if prophecy has ended, why do we quote the scripture for our prayers? If God is not speaking, then let's erase Jeremiah 33, 3 out of the scriptures. Number two, John 10, 27. My sheep hear my voice. My sheep hear my voice. And I know them and they follow me. My sheep. <laughs> We are God's flock. We are the flock of Jesus Christ. We are hearing him and we are following him. Now, if you're not hearing your God, why then do you follow that God? You're only making things up in your head. You are worse than a madman. You're not even hearing voices, but you're claiming that you are. My sheep hear my voice. John 16, 13. How be it. When the spirit of truth is come. He will guide you. Into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself. But watch this now. Whatsoever he hear. That shall he speak. And look at the next part. And he will show you things to come. What is that? That's prophecy. That's the prophetic in operation. That's him showing you things in the future. Now, these three verses alone, I could have picked out many more. Proves to you what? That there's a continued operation of the Holy Spirit in the now. Can you imagine if God was not speaking now? then what's the point in praying? What's the point in meditating? What's the point in following him if we can't hear him, if he decides not to speak? What's the point? What's the point of Christianity then if we have a God that doesn't speak? Aren't we the same as others? And wouldn't our claim to Jesus being the only way, the truth and the life, be erroneous? Why are we set apart? Because we have a God that speaks. And God said that all the others, they are idols. Dumb idols. They need to speak. They need to see. They need to hear. They need to move. They are the works of men's hands. And so the, 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 the case is made as far as I'm concerned. God speaks. And we can have very testimonies of people who have been hearing God and who have been speaking on behalf of the Spirit of God to individuals, to churches, to groups, to nations, to communities. In other words, God speaks. And he continues to speak. Now, concerning the gift of prophecy, let's look at a few things concerning its history and we move into its future. The gift of prophecy operated before creation. I declare things that are not as though they were. <laughs> Before creation, there was never an atom. Before there was ever an electron, God saw and God spoke things into existence. It was by the prophetic word that creation began. And so you can see that the gift of prophecy has the potential to create it has the potential to bring things out of nothing and make them visible that is why when you speak you are creating when you speak you are actually bringing things into existence the words that you speak are not just puff 
and gushes of air. They are actually spiritual power sent on assignment to manifest that which you have uttered. They are actually what? Spiritual powers sent on assignment to manifest the thing you have uttered out of your mouth. Now, John 1, verse 1 to 3 says, In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, then the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. How does prophecy operate? Prophecy operates by Word. Word. John 8, verse 58. Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Before Abraham was, I am. John, Genesis 1, verse 1 to 3. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters, and God said, First prophetic utterance, let there be light. And there was light. In other words, when you speak, you are participating in creative power. Psalm 33, verse 6 and verse 9. By the word of the Lord, the heavens were made. By what? His word. So what we are looking at here are manifested words. The heavens. It's a manifested word. The stars, the moon, the sun, the galaxies, manifested word. He says, by the word of the Lord, the heavens were made. And by the breath of his mouth, all their host. For he spoke and it came to be. He commanded and it stood firm. You see, these are dimensions of the prophetic, prophetic operation before creation. This is God operating as the master creator and speaking and pronouncing things and declaring things. And what he says is coming to pass. Can I say something to you? Where God is taking us is that there will come a time in our existence in him that when we speak, what we say will manifest. It won't take time. It won't take decades. It won't take millenniums. That what we say will manifest. There was a prophet like that. Prophet Samuel said not one of his words fell to the ground. There was a prophet called Moses said before he finished speaking, the words start manifesting. Listen, these are levels. These are dimensions of the prophetic operation. Just giving you the history of the prophetic. Isaiah 48 verse 13. It says, my hand laid the foundation of the earth and my right hand spread out the heavens. When I call to them, they stand forth together. So in other words, God's voice was very active in creation. And before we saw anything visible, God prophesied. So what we are actually seeing now called creation is actually a prophecy. My God. What we are seeing now is actually a prophecy. And watch this now. Let's take this a little bit further. You and I were created in the image and the likeness of God. It means then that we have within us the creative ability of the prophetic inside of us. That is why you have to be careful what you say. 
because what you say will manifest. What you speak will come to pass. When you begin to understand these things now, remember, faith comes by hearing. Hearing by the word. How do you release power? You bring illumination of the word to the minds of men that faith may be activated to unlock what is locked up in them. Now, I am bringing to you that because God operated prophetically and his prophetic operations began before creation to bring creation into existence, and you are a product of the prophetic, God said, let us make man in our image and in our likeness. And man was created by God in God's image and in God's likeness. So much so that Adam was able to call forth animals and name them. And whatsoever Adam called them, that was their name to this day. My God, please understand. Nothing has shifted since Adam prophetically spoke. Now you and I, being redeemed in Jesus Christ, hallelujah, have been brought back into our image and our likeness and our prophetic nature that when we now, as the redeemed, begin to speak, what begins to happen? Things begin to be created. Your faith now has shifted. You will no longer speak the way you have been speaking. Now you understand why certain things have been happening to you. It's not because of an attack. It's not because of witchcraft. It's because of mouthcraft. You have been speaking wrongly. You have been speaking contrarily. You have been speaking confusingly, if there's such a word. You can't say one thing positive and then you say another negative. What happens? You are countering what you say. There's a clash. There's a cancellation. If you are going to speak positively, speak positively. And what you say will happen. Why? Because the creative element is inside of you. Get back into your true nature as a prophetic individual. Let's go to number two. We are tracing the history of the prophetic. The gift of prophecy operated in the prophets of the Old Testament. The gift of prophecy, it has a long history of use in the Old Testament. These prophets were not men who got up one day and said, oh, I feel like I'm a prophet. Oh, I feel like I'm going to say some things today. No. These are men whom God revealed himself to them. Whether by vision, whether by audible voice, whether by dream, whether by uh, manifestations of his glory, however he chose. But when these guys get up to speak, they speak with absolute clarity, absolute purity, absolute authority, the word of God that was given to them. They would put their necks on the block for what they are saying. Why? 
because God revealed himself and revealed his word to them. Why would a man like Abraham, Abraham is a prophet, God said so to Abimelech. Why would a man called Abraham get up from the comforts of his father's house where he stood to inherit land, authority, fame, power, to go to a land that he has no map to find? Why would a man decide that he's leaving everything behind that he has worked for, that he is waiting for, that he's going to inherit, to go to a country and a city that nobody has ever seen? The Bible says whose builder and maker is God. I can just imagine Abraham in his prophetic immaturity. As he journeyed and he met somebody and he said, uh, do you know the way to the city whose builder and maker is God? And they'll be looking at him. This man is gone somewhere upstairs and he finds somebody else. Uh, can you show me the way to the city whose maker and builder is God? And they look at him. Huh? And by the third time he realized nobody knows where this place is. It's only God that can lead me here. Why? Would somebody do that? Because God revealed himself to them. Now, Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 9 said, Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. This is not figurative. This is literal. And the Lord said to me, Behold, I have put my words in your mouth. So one touch, God's hand, boom, on Jeremiah's mouth, put God's words in Jeremiah's mouth. Can you imagine? Can you imagine that? Just, just think about that for a moment. Jeremiah wasn't operating like other prophets who would hear God first and then speak. No, Jeremiah was speaking Everything he said was God's words coming out of his mouth. Naturally, uncontrollably, spontaneously. Just imagine Jeremiah got up one morning, wanted to say good morning. And instead of saying good morning, he said, thus say the Lord. <laughs> because it was God's words in his mouth. Numbers 12, 5 to 6. And the Lord came down in the pillar of the cloud and stood in the door of the tabernacle and called Aaron and Miriam. And they both came forth. And he said, hear now my words. So he, God was standing there. Aaron and Miriam was seeing him. Hey, Jesus. And they were hearing him. And he said, now you two, hear my words. If there be a prophet among you, I, the Lord, will make myself known unto him in a vision and will speak to him in a dream. And he went further to talk to them about Moses. He said, but my servant Moses, I speak to him face to face. There are levels in the prophetic operations amongst the prophets. Some get visions. Some get dreams. Some get the audible voice. Some they're standing before God, face to face. Gabriel, the angel said, look, I stand in the presence of God. So what I'm saying is not second hand. I, am, I, I, I heard that directly. Now today, well, let me backtrack. Those prophets of the Old Testament, God used them for scriptural purposes. Scriptural purposes. Now, not everything they said was scripture because there are many prophets whose prophecies were not recorded as scripture. But the majority that God raised up were for 
scriptural purposes to bring about the revelation of Jesus Christ. Now, today, the canon of scripture is closed. You can't add anything to it. You can't subtract from it because God is not operating in the prophets like that anymore. Any prophetic utterance that we now have is lower in standard to scripture, which now tests all utterances that are given. Now, prophetic utterances are now considered as revelations of the mind and will of God for an individual, a people, or a nation in a specific time. Revelation does not mean scripture. It means uncovering or unveiling what God has in mind for the now. In Deuteronomy chapter 4 and verse 2, you shall not add unto the word which I command you, neither shall you diminish anything from it, that you may keep the commandments of the Lord which I command you. This was an instruction. Revelation 22, verse 18 to 19, for I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book, if any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. And if any man shall take away from the words of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city and out of the things which are written in this book. Amos 3 verse 7. Surely the Lord God will do nothing, but he revealeth his secret unto his servants, the prophets. The prophets of the Old Testament, God used them to reveal his secrets unto them. What secret, you may ask? The secrets and the mysteries of Christ and the church. All of these things were revealed to these prophets. Some of them didn't even know what they were speaking. Some understood that they were speaking of a time to come. And the writer of Hebrews now made us to understand that they without us are incomplete. Because we see the manifestations of many of the things that they spoke. The prophets of the Old Testament, they operated under the prophetic gift. Now we move to the apostles of the New Testament. Specifically, the apostles of the Lamb, the 12 apostles, the 12 disciples in the New Testament. They spoke on the divine inspiration and revelation of Jesus and the Holy Spirit. They wrote down words that Jesus spoke verbatim, directly. And whatever the Holy Spirit wanted to convey to us, they wrote it down the way he wanted it. Now, they recorded for us Jesus' life and the various revelations they had in the books and the letters that they were, that sent, were sent to the churches. And these are the documents that we have today. So the apostles operated like prophets. Galatians 1 verse 11 to 12. But I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man. For I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. In other words, Paul is saying, look, this gospel that I preach, Peter didn't teach it to me. Matthew didn't teach it to me. Luke didn't teach it to me. I was taught it by Jesus, which means this man had regular encounters and visitations of Jesus Christ. Regular. If you talk about a man who saw Jesus like on a regular basis. Living in the heavenly realms. Paul was that guy. 
That's why he was so bold, so brazen, so fearless. Paul. Now let's go a little bit further. The prophetic gift moved now from the apostles to the saints of the early church. Where the gift now was active in the believers of the early church. Many of these believers were instructed by what? By prophetic revelations. And that this gift was active amongst them. It was an active part of the New Testament church. So now how come we have strayed so far where the gift of prophecy is not even allowed in some of our churches? That some churches don't want this gift to, 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 to be operating inside there. I don't know how a church can function without the gift of prophecy operating inside there. Now let's look at some things. Acts chapter 11, verse 27 to 28. And in these days came prophets from Jerusalem unto Antioch. They called them prophets. They had the prophetic gift. They were in the prophetic office. They came from Jerusalem to Antioch. And there stood up one of them named Agabus and signified by the spirit, meaning gave some sign, that there should be a great famine throughout all the world which came to pass in the days of Claudius Caesar. And when you check the records, yes, there was a great famine in the days of Claudius Caesar. And this prophecy allowed them to prepare for this famine. Mm -hmm. Acts chapter 21, verse 8 and 9. And the next day, we were that we that were of Paul's company departed and came to Caesarea and we entered into the house of Philip the evangelist which was one of the seven meaning he was one of the seven deacons that were chosen and he became an evangelist and we abode with him and this same man had four daughters four daughters virgins which did prophesy listen the bible is very uh careful about when it writes some things why didn't the bible just say man had four daughters which prophesy why why put virgin inside there why what is the business of virginity doing in the midst of talking about daughters that prophesy let me tell you why the great dimensions of the prophetic gift are released through purity anytime purity becomes affected and i'm talking about physical purity spiritual purity anytime any aspect of purity becomes affected the prophetic gift becomes tainted and the holy spirit threw in a little key for you there to understand if you want to function in the prophetic remain pure if you want to function in the prophetic, remain pure. Purity activates the prophetic gift to greater levels. Remain pure. So, so Philip had daughters that prophesied. And we're talking about the saints of the early church. Just imagine you have four daughters, four sons. They're all prophets. My God. What a house. Acts 21 verse 10 and 11. As we tarried there many days, there came down from Judea a certain prophet named Agabus. So watch this now. There was the daughters of Philip. There were the prophets of Jerusalem. There was Agabus. There was Ananias. I think the prophetic gift was very active in the early church. And when he was come unto us, he took Paul's girdle, found his own hands and feet. So you see the prophetic operating with signs and said thus saith the holy ghost so shall the jews at jerusalem bind the owner of this girdle and shall deliver him into the hands of the gentiles so within the early church the prophetic gift was very very active why have we gone so far now i want you to picture something here brethren 
the church of the New Testament was the baby church. <laughs> Let me say it again. The church of the New Testament, the church in the days of Paul and Peter and John and Luke and Mark and Matthew and all of them and Philip and his virgin daughters. That was the baby church. And they were spitting prophetic fire. They were spewing out the prophetic gift as if it was normal. The church is now 2,000 years old. You would think by now we should be stopping sun and moon. By now we should be moving mountains from one location and landing it in another. By now we should be, we should be causing rivers to come in desert and streams to come in wilderness. Something has happened to us as the body of Christ. That has affected the prophetic flow. So much so now that when we see any little stream of the prophetic operating, we are quick to say, oh, he's a false prophet. He's operating by the devil. He has a familiar spirit. He has this. He has that. Because we are not used to power. And wherever the prophetic is, there is power. And what is the devil afraid of? He's not afraid of you singing. He's not afraid of you dancing and jumping. He's afraid of you prophesying. You know why? Because prophecy brings God in the now. And if he can get God out of the now, he can continue to do what he is doing. To oppress, to possess, to bind, to kill, to steal, to destroy. But once the prophetic enters, just know deliverance has come, healing has come, power has come, breakthrough has come. The prophetic is the key. And so Paul said something, he said, if you're going to covet any gift, he said, desire earnestly that you should prophesy. He understood that it was the key. Whereas tongues might be the activator, prophetic is the key. It's the key to unlock the power. So it moves from the saints of the early church to the believers of today. Now, there was never a time that the prophetic gift has ended or has stopped its operation. Never a time. It might be small, but it's still going on. Now, we move to the believers of today. And we are seeing that the gift of prophecy is still being given to believers because it is a part of our new covenant reality in Jesus Christ. It is part of the nine gifts being given by the Holy Spirit in 1 Corinthians 12. And the evidence of this gift is being seen in many believers all over the world who possess the gift of prophecy in its various levels and various dimensions of operation. Now, many leaders within the fivefold ministry offices, as well as many believers, operate in the gift of prophecy in some way, and you are going to see it. 
You're going you're gonna to suddenly realize, hold on. You mean this gift is in me? Uh-huh. Because not every gift given to you has explosive expression. And you might be operating in it and don't know. We are going to reveal it. Now, let's make some things clear now. The gift of prophecy has not ended. The gift of prophecy has continued in the church age from the day Pentecost was fulfilled in the book of Acts when Peter preached 3,000 souls were saved. Somebody said, for every time Peter denied Jesus, God gave him 1,000 souls. <laughs> he denied Christ three times. He get three times 1,000 souls when he preached. Well, that was what somebody said. There's also another statement that in the time of the law, 3,000 people died when the law tablets were broken. And in the time when grace was given, 3,000 people came to life whatever the connections are. The gift of prophecy has not ended. It didn't end with Apostle John. Thank God. We are witnesses to that. God is not confined to one place or to any one time in the past, in the present, or in the future. He continues to speak and will continue to speak. To say that the gift of prophecy has ended is a misrepresentation of scripture. Now, what about the world to come? Let's go to the scriptures because we're not just saying things. Let's go to the scriptures. Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 4 to 6. For it is impossible for those who were once enlightened. Do you know what brings enlightenment? It is the illumination of the Holy Spirit. The illumination of the Holy Spirit also operates on the prophetic dimension. Now let's continue. It is impossible. For those who were once enlightened and have tasted of the heavenly gift. What is the heavenly gift? The heavenly gift is Jesus Christ. Watch this now. And were made partakers of the Holy Ghost. Now, does the Holy Spirit speak? Does the Holy Spirit tell us of things to come? Absolutely. Verse 5. And have tasted the good word of God. Mm -hmm. Watch this now. And the powers of the world to come. Hold on a minute, dear prophet. Whoa, 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 whoa. Let's hold your horses right there. Are you saying to me that the things that we are experiencing now are actually as of the world to come? Yes, so prophecy, word of knowledge, word of wisdom, healing, faith, you name it. All of these things that we are experiencing in the Holy Ghost are actually powers of the world to come. So you mean my ability to hear God and speak is actually a power that belongs to the world in the world to come that the Holy Spirit is now pulling out of the future and putting into our present? Yes. So it simply means then that if the prophetic gift is a part of the powers of the world to come, then there is no ending to this thing. There's no ending to God speaking to us. 
There's no ending to us speaking the word of God. Come on, come on, think, expand your, your, your biblical abilities of understanding now. Expand your understanding. Expand it. Now, the gift of prophecy in its present operation within and among the believers is a dimension of the Holy Spirit who is eternal. We are receiving the prophetic in a dimension. And Paul said, the dimension that we are receiving it is in part. And then he said that when that which is perfect is come, the part will be done away with. Because now you'll receive the whole. You'll be able to think like God, see like God, hear like God, speak like God. Your prophetic ability will go to a whole new realm. Come on now. The gift of prophecy is part of the Holy Spirit's ability to know and to reveal things. We are being made now to partake in this part in small, small portions. However, what is more interesting is the fact that in the world to come, which is what we are looking forward to, the gift of prophecy will be a natural part of the believer's disposition in the Lord. Hearing God, seeing God, speaking like God will be a natural part of us. It is part of the powers, the dunamis, that we are tasting of now. So while prophecy will end in its current form, that is the knowing in part, there is a level called perfection. Hmm. This is where they miss this now. There is a level called perfection in the prophetic dimension that will allow us to clearly and completely see, hear, understand, and speak as God. Now, if you have a problem with that, I understand. But you will come to the revelation soon. Because we are hearers, joint hearers with Christ in God. Now watch what is happening. We are being brought back to our Adam state in Jesus. That whatever we call it, so shall it be. So in the new world to come, the world to come, the Bible says it will be a new heaven and a new earth. Now, the first heaven and the first earth shall be passed away. Now, if God brought animals to Adam and whatever he called it, that was his name, then I will use my imagination and say, God will bring stars and planets and, and galaxies to us and say, name them. And he will bring billions of stars and say, come Bernard, name them. And I will begin to name them. This one is called this, that, 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 that. How will I be able to do that if not by the prophetic abilities of God's perfection inside of me? And whatever I call it, that will be its name. Come on, is this thing ain't gonna end? There is a level called perfection that we are going to. So this means when we look at somebody whom we have never met, we will know immediately things about them in entirety that we never knew before. I'm talking about the new world, the world to come. God, the knowledge of God, the righteousness of God, all of these things will be in us naturally. It's, it's Jeremiah having God's hand touching his mouth but for us this time is not the hand of god touching our mouth it is god living in us and we living in god this is not 
figurative language. This is not a metaphor. This is, this is going to be our literal state. Now you can understand Paul's revelation of it earnestly to prophesy. Oh, Jesus. So let's put it this way. In the world to come, we will have a greater dimension of prophetic power, prophetic ability, prophetic gift called perfection. Perfection is a prophetic dimension in the realm of knowledge called teleos. Write down that word, teleos. T-E-L-E-I-O-S. Perfection is a prophetic dimension in the realm of knowledge called teleos. Teleos is the ultimate prophetic purpose completely revealed. Let me repeat it. It's the ultimate prophetic purpose completely revealed. When Peter, oh my God, revealed something concerning Jesus. He said, who do men say that I am? Some say you're Elias. Some say you're this. Some say you're that. They weren't operating by the prophetic at that point. But Peter entered into the teleos. And he said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. And then Jesus turned to him and said, hey, Peter, flesh and blood did not reveal this to you. My father, which is ever in heaven. And I say unto you that thou art Peter. He got a name change immediately. Listen, when we enter that teleos realm, you won't know me as Bernard. I will get a new name. Because that realm will change me. That realm will change you. You will know how this ties into that. And how that ties into this. You will know how the dots are connected. And why this dot is there. And why that God's plan fully laid out before your eyes. My God Almighty. You will know why, you will know how, you will know when, you will know where, you will know who. Telios level. Mighty God of Daniel. So the prophetic will not end. It's the part that we are in now. That will end. And then we move to another dimension. God speaks to all humanity through his creation. He spoke to Israel by his prophets. He speaks through us to us through his son. He continues to speak to us through the word, the scriptures. He speaks to us through his spirit. And he's speaking to us through other people. By the Holy Ghost. The prophetic gift. Has a history. And the prophetic gift. Has a future. Glory be to God. Amen. I think I will stop there. For tonight. And we will pick up again. Next week. By the grace of God. Amen.